is that it's a requirement of the Passover lamb that none of the bones are broken. John tells us that right before the Roman direction was bringing Jesus' legs, they realized he was already dead, so they didn't break his legs, and that was a deliberate. It was a deliberate prophetic fulfillment of Jesus as Passover lamb. No, no bone of his was, was broken. And the egg, it's a beitza, that's how you say it in Hebrew. It represents the festival sacrifice, and it's, it's, it's roasted because the lamb was roasted over a fire, so that's why it's scorched. It's the, it represents the scorching of the, the, the lamb on the fire. And it also reminds us of the sovereignty of God. That went upon all the leisures. It's the blood of the Nile, the, the frogs, the gnats, the flies, the play of the livestock, the boils, the hail, locusts, darkness, and half of the firstborn. And the deliverance from the oppression. So we lift up the cup in recognition of Yahweh, our deliverer.
more than enough to support them. So, I didn't know until a couple days ago that this was actually a song, and it's sung in Hebrew, I can't, I don't know, I didn't even know it was a song before I was there. So what we're going to do is, I think, we're going to think Ray wants to sing it with me. Just so you know, when Jesus did the Passover, it just Mark chapter 14, verse 22, and Luke 22, 14, we we'll go back to that. But Jesus sang the laws. And one of the, one of the songs that he sang from the front to back, there's a four of them, was Psalm 119. The longest song. He sang the whole thing. So at the marriage feast of the Lamb, I can't wait to hear him sing those songs again. Whew. Anyway. Anyway. We're going to harmonize our keys. <laughs> Very good. Okay. Sorry. Ray and I will watch the singing. <laughs> <laughs> and then we'll, and then we'll, at the end, this is we, 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 you know, we're um, at, the, at the end, we'll harmonize day and day together. It'll sound something like this. We'll just go, day and 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 day We'll do that together at the end after Ray and I sing. Oh, no, no, no. Ray wants to sing already. Really good. Okay. And run us out of Egypt and the Bible seems to run us And he divided the sea and not permitted us to cross on dry land day. To cross the sea on dry land and not kept us alive for forty years in the desert day. And he kept us alive for forty years in the desert and not fed us manna day. And he fed us manna and not give us the Sabbath day. And he given us the Sabbath and not brought us to the mountain.
Amen. He is risen indeed. And they drank it, 
And they began, they sang, and they said to him, this is my, this is my blood of the new covenant. So to hear Yeshua the Mashiach is saying, this is my blood of the new covenant. They didn't have the revelation or the understanding of what that was until even after the resurrection. But they have been told to them many times, is that we have been told many times, and maybe not get the revelation of what the Holy Spirit is trying to speak to us in getting us to the next level. So here's it, he says, this is my blood of the new covenant which is shed for many. Assuredly I say to you, I will no longer drink of the fruit of the vine until that day when I drink it in the new kingdom of God. So if you take that and you flip over to uh, Luke 22.14, and to read this in the Hebrew is pretty cool. If you look at verse 11, this is how quickly things move in the kingdom. Or, this is how quickly things work in, move in the kingdom. All. Everyone. Sometimes we didn't, they didn't have the revelation, but then things are spoken apostolically from heaven, God's voice. We're in the year 5,700 and what? 82. Five stands for what? Grace. Yeah, beautiful grace, but also apostolic order. Jesus is the chief cornerstone, then you have the apostle. And the other prophet, evangelist, teacher, and pastor, all put together, right? So, five, seven is the number of what? Perfection. Perfect. Complete. It's also, uh, 777 is the number of Jesus in Hebrew. Seven is blessings, okay? Eight is the number of resurrection life. The new beginnings. Two is the number of covenant. Mm -hmm. 2022. 5782. Covenant. God is really positioning us for covenant. So when you look at what, what it says here in, in Mark, uh, pardon me, Luke um, 22, verse 11, it says, Then you shall say to the master of the house, The teacher says to you, Where is the guest room? where I may eat the Passover with my disciples. Okay, so this, this, is the, this is the day before the Passover. He's calling them disciples. And then there's a transformation that hits, and then he will show you a large finished upper room where they're making ready. I've been in that room. That's the word K-Pasky now, 120. Uh, five, uh, I want you to know, they had it traditionally written out that that's what they know that the fire came down there. They know the 120 were in there. It's written down in all different types of journals, just not in the Christian journals. Uh, Joseph wrote it as well. Um, so they knew that something happened in the upper room. And then, then after 40 days, the, the 120, right? <laughs> and in that large finished upper room, they, made, they were to make it ready. We are to make it ready. We are being called to make it ready in our house. Each house is a God is in the house. We are to make it ready to be prepared. Isaiah 40 verses 1 to 5, you know, John the Baptist, he was saying, prepare, prepare ye the way. There's going to be crooked things, crooked way. We're going through all that kind of stuff right now. And God's going to make a way straight. And then, and then in verse 14, when the hour had come, when suddenly comes, when the covenant comes, remembrance will be. Remember everything that we are in this from the Passover and the blood and so on. And it says, and it says they sat down in the twelve apostles. They were birthed into speaking what God had called them to be apostles. Acts 9.15. It says, there's a certain person, he was chosen to be my apostle. He was chosen to be my disciple. That was Paul on the Damascus Road. You might say, well, I'm not worthy. It's not about you being worthy. God knows who you are as soon as you come into a place of obedience. The rest will fall into place. Amen. The, I want you to know all the disciples 
were not in obedience at that time, but it was being spoken and proclaimed that they would be. Awesome, eh? As I speak, I proclaim over you in the name of Adonai Elohim, Yeshua Mashiach, the Ruach HaKadosh, that everything is being proclaimed from heaven be upon you and every blessing that God has for each and every one of you. And when the hour had come, the twelve apostles with him, and he said to them, with fervent desire. What would fervent desire be, Ralph? Just intense, very intense. Deb, have you ever had fervent desire? Have you ever had fire hit you and you couldn't stop? You're vibrating like that. Yeah. Some of you, fervent desire, Jesus is so excited and based on the anticipation of this day from the beginning of time. Isn't that awesome? He was excited, fervent desire. In the Garden of Gethsemane, he bled blood. It says that same fervent desire was when the blood came out of his pores. That's how excited he was in regards to the shedding of But that blood was in intercession. With fervent desire, I have desired to eat this Passover with you before the beginning, like from the beginning of time, before I suffer. Wow. This is the Passover. He called it the Passover. He never called it communion. I know it came into being through Constantine, but it is the Passover for me. Yeah. Constantine changed some things, religion changed some things. Constantine in 335 AD did not want this in the church that he was building. And he said, and each and every one of us will get the same thing from this world. Whatever it may come from. He said to the uh, Messianic Jews, he said to the Jews, and he said to the Christians, if you will change your religion, the way, that was the name of the first church, the way. If you will change your relationship with Yeshua, I will stop persecuting you. I will no longer, <laughs> what do you call it when people are being wiped out? Genocide. So they came to a choice, instead of being killed in genocide, they decided to change and follow the way of Constantine. We are walking in the days of this type of steps and footprints, where we will have to stand, as it is in Joshua 1 9, to stand and be courageous based upon the blood of the Lamb. That's the prophetic word. Because Jesus desired this Passover, and he wanted to be with his apostolic ecclesia, and it was that persecution that came upon the apostles and the disciples that spread the gospel of Jesus Christ with the whole known word at that time for 335 years. Constantine couldn't put it out, so he manipulated it like the devil did the snake in the garden, the tree of good and evil. Basically, that's what happened. So, are you with me, guys? You're good? Okay. So, I'll just, John 11, 25, it says, I am the resurrection and the life. I am the resurrection and the life, Jesus said. The same spirit that raised Christ from the dead dwells in you, so you have the same resurrection and the life that promised inside you. I am the resurrection and the life. He that believes in me shall what? Shall what? Shall what? You're living in resurrection right now. Yeah. Ephesians 2 6. You're seated in heavenly places with the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords, and your inheritance is with Him. There is no other generation, it's just sons that are sitting in the throne with Jesus as brothers and sisters. There's no other generation behind that sort of religion. Understand? With me? From the beginning of time. Wow. Wow. Heaven and earth. If you believe in me, you shall not die. You will have resurrection life. In the Greek, it's called 
Alpha Tedesco. You, any of you scholars want to look it up? Alpha Tedesco. John 3.16. How does John 3.16 go? He gave four. Have what? Have lasting life. And in that everlasting life is Alpha Tedesco. Resurrection life will show never die. With Billy Graham left, he said, I'm changing post codes. Mm. <laughs> I'm not just saying changing post codes. You might say, well, it's rock and my theology, but let's go. I'm just saying. You just do your own studies. Resurrection life is now and forevermore. Somebody was really, I love that. Uh, it's come out a couple of times already. Uh, Jesus says, uh, I am the same yesterday, today. And tomorrow. That's, that's in scripture a few places. So and the Father says it, Jesus says it. You know what you know? We can say it. <laughs> if there had been no sin in the garden, what would we look like? There would have been no death, no disease. We would be there for all eternity. Ever lasting life, the tree of life. I want you to know, it's, it, it said sin had to leave the garden. So what was the sin that left the garden? Well, you think the snake stayed there? The devil had to go. Yeah, he had to go. He couldn't stay in the garden anymore. Who else had to go? Adam and Eve. And there's something that's never mentioned again. What else had to go? The tree of good and evil and knowledge. It's never mentioned again. If God was going to use any tree for Jesus to be sacrificed and nailed to and take and, and completely take out the tree of good and evil and knowledge, that would be the blood of the Lamb. Mm -hmm. And you read your scriptures now and, and, and in a number of different places it says there's, there's a tree on either side of the river. There's a tree on either side of the river. The tree of life and the tree of resurrection of Jesus. And you are the planting of the Lord and so on and one. You are Revelation 22 to all coming together as we come together in covenant. The leaves of, of what? The leaves of the trees are for the healing of all the nations. We have been called to do that. Uh, that's good, John 11. You got any less? Moving right along. She's, she's the boss here. Okay. So, worship songs. Let's do the worship songs and we'll flow with the third and fourth cup. And then we're done. Pretty much. I know more than No, we did the, we did the second. This one here is called the Cup of Redemption. And we brought so we did the third? Yeah, we did, eh? Okay, just, let's do that. And, uh, and then we got the fourth one. Yeah. I'm just going to get into a combination here. I just feel the Lord um, on this. And so I'm going to do one song for the second cup. Um, and I know this song is, is precious to Ray. It's Break Every Chain. Um, and we're talking about um, warfare, warfare for the second cup. And then we will go into the third cup. And um, we will go into Waymaker because he makes a way through everything.
the Lord will give you dominion and increase your inheritance. Little by little, I will drive them out before you until you have increased and you inherit the land. And we all said, I decree and declare the release of your ability to receive and receive your dominion and your inheritance this year. Amen. And we 